This is Ryan with Stonefly Aquatic Nursery. This is the last episode in our series, Aquatic Plants and Algae. Today, we're going to be talking about emergent and floating leaf plants. We're not going to cover every single plant because there are quite a few. We're just going to touch base on uh, some of the more common ones. Uh, the, all these plants are typically growing in two to four inches of water, maybe as much as six in some situations. Um, but these are typically associated with marshes or, or wetlands, but they also grow in some ditches um, along pond banks, along lake shores, and those types of areas as well. So water primrose is a pretty common one around here. It tends to be kind of rooted on back on the bank, but then it will grow out along the surface of the water. Uh, typically, it will grow out four to six feet from the bank itself with those floating stems and leaves. Uh, honestly, more people end up treating it to, to control it uh, than trying to propagate it or grow it. <clears throat> but the flowers are yellow, so they do have a nice little pretty color to them when they bloom. Smartweed uh, can kind of have a similar growth pattern as the primrose however it's not going to quite float and grow out into the pond like the primrose will the flowers on these are going to be a white to a pink um, there's two pop or not popular but the two common species around here have a pretty distinct small flower spike and that's what's pictured in the slide here and then there's another species that has a very large pink flower spike, but they all kind of look the same, just have some differences in color and size. So you're also going to see some very pronounced uh, nodes on the smartweed. That's something that kind of helps distinguish it from other plants. <coughs> Alligator weed is a non-native plant. The flowers on it kind of look like popcorn to me uh, from afar. Uh, once you get up close, you can see there's a bunch of little petals on those white flowers. It can grow similar to how the water primrose grows. It'll be rooted on the shore and can kind of float and grow out into the water. Um, but they can spread by fragmentation. Uh, so it's a plant that's started to become problem started to become a problem elsewhere, uh, primarily in uh, the south from what I hear. Parrot feather is another non-native. Um, it's kind of a goofy looking plant to me. I, it's something I've always had a hard time trying to describe, but the leaves almost kind of remind me of uh, pine needles uh, from a Christmas tree. So that's the explanation or description I'm going to stick with for this video, but they they root on the bank um, and then will grow in two to four inches of water or more. Sometimes leaves are often branching and they will breach that water surface. So you can have leaves that are submerged and leaves that are emerged from the water and those are going to both both look a little different. But overall, this plant is going to pretty well just stay green through and through. Now, the next few plants we're going to talk about are Sagittarias. This is bull tongue. It's got to be the biggest one of the Sagittarias. They can reach about three feet, four feet roundabout, um, but they're going to be green. They have a lancelet leaf shape, and their flowers are going to be above their stalks or their leaves. And that's something you're going to want to remember uh, as we go through these Sagittarias but they have three white petals, which is what you're gonna see from pretty much every Sagittaria and then also from some other very similar plant groups. <clears throat> but they'll grow from rhizomes, uh, they'll spread via uh, kind of like runners as well, and then also seeds. Broadleaf arrowhead is another Sagittaria. It looks very, very similar to the um, 
bull tongue. It's also called a duck potato as all Sagittarius are often called duck potato because of the tubers that they create that waterfowl tend to eat and uh, dig up and look for. Um, the easiest way to tell the broadleaf from the bull tongue is the flower from this broadleaf is going to be below the leaves whenever that three petaled white flower is produced. Again, they flower below the leaf and those flowers are going to be white with three petals. This last Sagittaria is more commonly referred to as duck potato and it's only called duck potato, whereas the other Sagittarius are called duck potato and a slew of other names. This one is almost exclusively called duck potato for uh, the common name. Um, like the other Sagittarius, it is a perennial, has a three petaled white flower, but this leaf is more arrow-like and you can see a split um, on the leaf in the picture here that makes it that differentiates it from the others. And these leaves also are much larger compared to the bull tongue and the broadleaf arrowhead that we've talked about. <coughs> bulrush, there are many, many, many different species of bulrush. So we're just gonna kind of keep it relatively vague um, for the sake of time. Uh, there's they are perennial, they're very grass-like. Some of them will reach six plus feet tall in the right conditions and they can grow in two or more feet of water if they're kind of tempered into that state. They'll create a very thick rhizome uh, structure that's gonna go throughout their the growth of the stand. Um, their seeds and flowers are kind of brownish looking pod things that you'll see at the tops, usually late spring, early summer is when these start to pop up. And then you'll even start to see some of the seed pods going into late fall. So those pods are kind of what you can see on this right picture. Water pennywort. Some people also call it a uh, dollar weed. Sometimes it'll pop up in lawns and it's a weed for them, uh, for landscapers, but it can be useful for some uh, erosion control around some ponds or lakes, but it can also grow out into the uh, water column itself floating, kind of sort of like the Ludwigia that we talked about, the hygrophila, I mean, uh, sorry, the water primrose that we talked about earlier on this uh, slide presentation. Um, their flowers are greenish to white. They're uh, I don't typically see them very often. This this plant spreads very readily uh, via fragmentation um, and seems to be pretty hardy. <clears throat> Pickerel weed. This is a favorite for many because it's so tough and it has such a pretty flower. Um, there are multiple purple flowers on a flower stalk and you can see that in the picture on the right. It's a perennial. It grows from rhizomes, puts out tons of seeds and um, those seeds can be eaten by waterfowl. So you get to feed some of your waterfowl and also get this nice aesthetic from pickerel weed along with it being a native that's really hardy and really tough. So it's got a, it's got a lot of appeal to it for wetlands, waterfowl management and, and, and what have you. <coughs> Frogs bit, this one's a little more uh, uncommon um, but it's a perennial and the, the leaves almost kind of remind me of the broadleaf arrowhead, but they're not quite as uh, thin, I guess, is a good way to put it, but they're going to have small white flowers with three petals. Sedges, this is a very, another large group kind of similar to what we saw with the bulrushes. There are many, many types of sedges and some of them are really, really hard to tell apart. But generally speaking, their perennials, their stems are triangular and their, the, the flower spikes are gonna be in those upper sections of that plant. So you can see that in the top left drawing or a picture, top left picture, and then in the bottom left drawing. Water willow is a, favorite of mine. I've spent a lot of time with water willow. 
It's a perennial, gives off this nice little flower. It can be great for erosion control. It can be great for fisheries management. This, this plant's very tough, spreads really well. It can grow in four feet of water or, or more in some situations. Um, but it's definitely something you want to watch and make sure it's not spreading too easily because it can spread via fragmentation uh, along with its seeds. Powdery alligator flag. That is the common name and we never use that common name because it's just too many syllables. I just call it Thalia, but it's another perennial. Grows about four feet tall and then it'll put out this big uh, long flower spike. Um, the, the flower, the stem part of that flower spike is sometimes five or six feet. And then the flower itself, which is what we see in this picture on the bottom right is a bunch of those little small uh, purple flowers there. They do add a little aesthetic to that. Uh, they're going to flower from spring to late summer around here. Again, we're uh, northeast of Dallas. Um, so if you're ballpark in that area, you can expect it to flower around that time frame. Um, but they'll also spread via their, those seeds that they create with that flower and that rhizome. It's a, it's a hardy native plant that kind of gives a tropical or subtropical look if you're trying to stay with native plants, but add something that maybe doesn't look like a native plant. Uh, the thalia can really kind of be that middle ground. <clears throat> Golden canna is another one of those plants that can kind of give off the vibe of a non-native, but it is a native plant. Uh, they get these big uh, elliptical kind of shaped leaves that give it that subtropical, tropical look. They also have that nice, pretty golden, uh, golden to yellow flower. They grow really easily. They spread uh, very easily. They're pretty tough and um, give you that aesthetic along with it. So they're going to spread via the the seeds that they create and then also that rhizome growth um, that you'll see pop up uh, alongside that mother plant. Really cool plant though. Um, these last two or three are going to be our water lilies that it, and these are hence the floating leaf at the in the title. So the, the white water lily is one of the more common ones used because it's pretty hardy. It's pretty easy to establish and get growing where you want to grow it. It also has this nice big white flower that's going to have spring through summer, maybe into fall, depending on where you are. Something that's kind of interesting about these, when you start messing with water lily rhizomes, because you can split those rhizomes to make new plants, your hands are going to get this purple stain and your hands are going to be purple for a week if you're digging in these rhizomes. So if that's something you're doing and you're worried about having purple hands, you may want to think about trying to get some gloves or something. But white water lily is a cool, nice, relatively easy lily to establish that can be great for fisheries management along with some beautification. Spatterdock is one of the lilies I, I, I don't know that I'd recommend. Uh, I've seen this take over a lake that's 30, 40 acres and cause a lot of problems. Um, but if you're watching it, it can definitely be useful. It can give you some habitat similar to what we were saying with the white water lilies. Um, they're going to have this kind of goofy looking yellow flower that's only got three petals. And in this picture on the right, um, that's not quite an open flower, but um, they've only got three petals. It's kind of big and bulbousy looking uh, flower. It's also called cow lily and it's going to spread um, with seeds and rhizomes very similarly to what we'll see from the white water lily. American lotus is another one of those lilies that I would not necessarily recommend for most situations because it can grow and overtake small water bodies, even larger water bodies. It's kind of the typical lily. The, the flower is huge. It's a really big flower. It's probably six inch, six ish inches across and they're usually kind of white to yellow, maybe even kind of cream colored. And it creates this brown comb looking thing. And when I say comb, I don't mean like combing your hair. I mean like a honeycomb kind of looking thing. And you can see that in the drawing in the bottom left picture. <clears throat> and in those combs, you'll see a bunch of little uh, 
holes and in those holes are the seeds themselves. So as they develop, that comb will turn brown and uh, as it dries out, those seeds will fall out into the water columns. That's really kind of neat, but it's another plant that is native, but can cause problems is more likely to cause problems than say your white water lily. So I know that was really, really quick and we covered a lot, but I was trying to cover as much information as possible without sucking you into a 20, 30, 45 minute video. So I hope that you got something from this. Again, it's just kind of an intro into plants, um, what species are there. There's many, many more we did not talk about here. We just kind of hit some of the common ones that you may see, whether it's outside in your own pond or looking at somebody's site trying to buy some plants. So if you liked this video and this series, uh, hit the like button. Let us know if you have any questions down in the comments section. If you didn't like it, let me know so I can work on it for future videos because this is not going to be the last time that we do a series like this. Hopefully, we'll see. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate it.